what we call food spoilage is really when microorganisms eating our food. From the microorganism point of view, I mean, if they do have one, there's nothing wrong with it. As a matter of fact, their ability to break down organic matters plays a critically important role in nutrient recycling in nature. To digest different types of nutrients, microorganisms evolved ability to produce various enzymes and metabolic pathways. These biochemical reactions are the mechanism that changes the characteristic of food. For example, sugar and carbohydrates are digested by cellular respiration or fermentation. Protein can be digested by proteolysis process and fat can be digested by lipolysis process. And of course, microbial growth on food surface and the toxin production are also ways for, chain, for causing spoilage. Most microorganism oxidize carbohydrate as their primary source of solid energy, basically carbon. Um, solid respiration is the process of release energy by breaking down glucose and other food molecules in the presence of oxygen. Where fermentation is the process by which cells release energy in the absence of, of oxygen. And then there, there's lactic acid fermentation um, which is a metabolic process by which glucose or other like six carbon sugars or, or two carbon sugars are converted into cellular energy and lactic acid. And now we mentioned hydrofermentative and, and homofermentative. Fermentation produce variety of products, including ethanol, acetic acid, lactic acid, and carbon dioxide. Is, is basically a mechanism that, that support the entire industry um, or anything that relating to fermentation. This fermentation process produces many desirable products, such as soy sauce, cheese, yogurt, wine, and bread. When fermentation is not desired, then it's a spoilage, right? Um, for example, you may enjoy yogurt, but you would not like to drink soured milk. Pictic substance are important cell wall components of higher plants, basically, um, you know, like vegetables and fruits. They, they kind of the glue um, that, that connect the cell wall together. Bacteria and fungi can break down this, this, uh, this glue as well. So that will cause the collapse of the cell wall and cause the rotten of, of the vegetable. To break down protein though, you need proteolytic enzymes and bacteria that has that. Proteolysis is the breakdown of protein or peptide into amino acids by the, by the action of enzymes. Spoilage bacteria produce proteolytic enzymes and they break down you know, foods such as meat, milk, or seafood, the compound produced by proteolysis and related metabolic activity often has a really bad smell. That's because the, the chemicals they produced during this process. This process is highly regulated and fast in the presence of, of water. So that's why, you know, like fresh meat has a lot of water in, inside that can go really bad quickly. And, uh, some species, like if it's pseudomonas, then it, it produces even more um, bad smell chemicals that just, just uh, you know, keep people, animal away. And for fat, bacteria produce lipolytic enzyme to attack it. Lipolysis is the breakdown of fat and other lipids by lipolytic enzymes, and the end product is fatty acid. And many microorganisms produce these enzymes, such as Pseudomonas, Staphylococcus, Retipus, Mucor. And the fatty acid they produce in the end of um, metabolic pathway are usually 
have gave the off this all flavor um, or really rinse and order. Most of the microorganisms can spoil food by growth on the surface. Um, they, they simply grow and accumulate biomass on food and making the food unsuitable for consumption. So that's, you know, that's including mold, yeast, and bacteria. Some of those produce mycotoxin. Um, and the, the mycotoxin are toxin compound that naturally produced by certain types of mold. Mold that can produce mycotoxin grow on many different types of foodstuffs, uh, such as cereal, dried foods, nuts, and spice. Mold growth can occur either before or after harvest, during storage, um, in, in or on food itself, and usually under warm, damp, and humid condition. And most of my mycotoxins are chemically stable and can survive in food process. Bacteria can also produce a toxin. Uh, we, you know, one of them we see, but you know, those toxins are, are really lethal, and and also they're intratoxin and neurotoxin. So, in summary, we have discussed that microorganisms can break down food in different ways, including proteolysis, which is protein breakdown of protein and cellular respiration, which is a breakdown of sugar in the presence of uh, oxygen, and the fermentation, which is breakdown of sugar without oxygen, and lipolysis, which is breakdown of lipid, and then of course, surface growth. growth. Often bacteria and fungi can attack food using one or more mechanisms. That's depending on the type of the food, or the food processing method. 